to talk about culture for a moment because uh, after being ruled from London for, for so long, how anglicised was Ireland and how important were the moves to uh, assert a, a cultural identity through sport and more particularly, I suppose, through the language movement? By the end of the 19th century, clearly, the language shift, the vernacular language shift from Irish to English as the main vernacular was very far advanced. The enclaves of uh, native Irish speakers was shrinking all the time. And it did seem that it, the, 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 the death, so to speak, of the Irish language as, in pop, as a vernacular, as a community language, uh, was on the horizon. But even more generally, Anglicisation was more than simply the language. The critique of what had happened to Ireland was that it had become provincial and derivative. That essentially it was generating no ideas, no cultural forms, that it, in a, in a, to use the, the colonial word, that it, it despised its own resources, its own cultural resources, whether they were of folklore or of design or of anything, not just the language. And the cultural revival movement, that large popular front, as it were, of nativism from the 1880s onwards, through the games in the GAA, through Yeats and Lady Gregory's project, through Hyde and the Language Project, all of them had a common purpose, that was to say, uh, the regeneration of self-respect and self-regard and a re-estimate of the value of the native resources. The native resources, rather than to be simply derivative and imitative, to be innovative and creative based upon native resources. There were, of course, other elements in it. There was an, an element of Anglophobia. There was a degree of uh, uh, resistance to the modern world. There was a certain romanticization of, of nativism. But ultimately, it was about the recovery of a national spirit of self-worth self and self-regard across a whole range of areas. Uh, and it was seen as de-anglicization, a rather, a rather unhistorical uh, way of thinking. But nonetheless, the idea was that you would recover the national resources across the whole spectrum of Irish creativity from a torpor that it was in and that you would effectively use that as the key engine for regenerating self-respect that would then percolate throughout all arteries of, the, of national life, including the economy. And of course, a, a breeding ground for advanced nationalism. It's striking if you look at the biographies of any of the people that played a key role in the rising and the War of Independence and so on, they all had that background. Certainly, the cultural movements as a whole attracted the more advanced nationalists and those indeed who were separatists, who wanted a separate national life. They also attracted the young, idealistic, educated who found their, their, their career paths, as it were, blocked by the existing ancien regime. In other words, the impatient, if you like, overeducated young who found in cultural revivalism and in the shaping of a new Ireland an outlet for their idealism and for their intelligence and their, for their organisation in the hope indeed that they would be the shapers of a new Ireland, a new cultural dispensation as well as a political dispensation in an independent Ireland. So the cultural movements were very important uh, vectors for advanced nationalism and separatism.